If you have your Bibles and you join me in James, the second chapter, beginning at verse 14, we're going to read through verse 20. James chapter 2, beginning at verse 14 and reading through verse 20. Now watch this, kids. Ta-da! You didn't even have to look it up. I put it right up there for you. But you got it in your hand. Good. <laughs> James chapter 2, verses 14 through 20. I always read from the King James text. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Amen. If we'll go to the Lord once again. Master, we love you. We thank you for the presence of the Lord. As we sing the grand old songs of the church. You wrote our name, Lord, and we're grateful that today we have that assurance that our name can be found in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you are in fact and indeed the dearest friend I've ever had. Master, right now the Word of God must go forth. I know, I know that the message in my spirit is a message that you have planted there for this hour, for this moment, for this audience, those in this room, those that are watching by reason of the internet live and those who will watch later. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost if I'm to convey to the people of God what you have placed in my heart for this moment. Touch my spirit. Touch my body, touch my lips. And Master, today, touch the ear of every hearer. Allow our heart today to be softened and made ready to receive the engrafted Word of God, that it might bring forth fruit unto righteousness, that our faith might increase, even at this hour. For we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name, Amen. Praise God and amen. I'm taking a little bit of poetic license today with the title of my message. I've titled the message today, Thespian Christians. The term thespian you might recognize as a term that refers to those who participate in the acting profession, actors and actresses. I'm using that word today in a little bit different a context, in a slightly different light, as James, the Lord's brother, is writing to the church and explaining to them that faith without works. Now in this instance, a lot of people, the biggest mistake they make is every time they see a certain word, especially in the King James, they think it means the same thing everywhere, but it doesn't. 
oftentimes they are actually translated from different words. They translate three different words, works. But in this instance, the term works does not mean works of righteousness. It does not mean the works of the law. It literally means action. So what James, the brother of the Lord, is saying is that faith without action is useless. He said, if you've got somebody in the church who's hungry, if you've got somebody in the church who needs clothing, and you pat him on the back and say, well, I'm praying for you, say, what good is your faith? Where's your action? You're supposed to act, not merely profess faith. There are a lot of people in the Christian world today who call themselves Christians. But they don't act much like Christians. <sighs> Calling yourself a duck don't make you a duck. Amen. Calling yourself a Christian. A lot of people make that mistake, folks. Jesus said, by, by their fruits you'll know them. He said it had nothing to do with what they're professing. It has to do with what they're living. If they're not living a life that demonstrates the fruit of the Spirit... Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. Am I telling the truth? Amen. If you're not seeing those things in their life, then I got news for you. I don't care how many times a week they go to church. I don't care how much money they put in the offering plate. I don't care if they're best friends with the pastor. The reality is they are claiming something they do not possess. And sadly, there are too many people in our community today who have allowed themselves to be hurt and have allowed themselves to be pushed away from God by people who profess something they don't even possess. Mm -hmm. Because they're actors. They act like they're Christians. They'll tell you they're a Christian. Now listen, Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote one of the most lasting, enduring, popular plays in the history of Broadway called Cats. Now people don't walk out on that stage made up like cats and dressed up like cats and then walk out on the stage and say, look at me, I'm a cat. I'm a cat. I woohoo, I'm a cat. No. A true thespian is one whose actions demonstrate the role they play. So they're not claiming to be a cat, they're acting like a cat. So we have people in the church today who act like Christians. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and yet their actions never demonstrate that they're a Christian. But then you got thespian Christians, and they act the part. Hallelujah. They actually act like Christians. I've talked many times about uh, the church I grew up in and the church that I came to be a part of when I moved to Fort Worth, Texas. Both were wonderful churches. I grew up in the Assemblies of God. The church that I grew up in honestly had some of the most loving people, the nicest people. My whole life was hell on wheels. I had a father who was a raging narcissist. And I won't even get into my mother. I'll just take my word for it. There was no safe harbor either direction I went. I went to church, and the people in church were supportive. They were encouraging. They were uplifting. They were loving. Never, ever did I go to church and feel rejected or feel pushed aside. I had a unique experience, I know. 
my grandmother told me many years after I became an adult, she said, honestly, CJ, stands for Chuck Jr., she said, honestly, CJ, you just don't realize how wonderful and unique the church you grew up in was. She said, we really had a wonderful bunch of people. You know, it was a very unique body of people. And my experience growing up was by no means uh, negative. I had a very positive experience. That's probably why today my faith is as strong as it is, because my experience was positive. Now, after I came out, I'm not going to say, many years later, I'm not going to say folk didn't look at me a little strange. But I will say they treated me well, even knowing that my circumstance had changed. But then I went to Fort Worth at the age of 16. God called me to Fort Worth, Texas, and I became part of the Riverside Church of God, pastored by Brother J.T. Gillum, an old-timey, old-timey Pentecostal church. The ladies piled their hair on their head, you know, and they wore the long sleeves and the long dresses. But you know something? I saw people come into that church who were prostitutes, who were drug addicts, who had very severe issues and troubles in their life, and not one soul in that church whispered a word about that person. Mm -mm. That was the most loving bunch of people I ever saw in my life. Man, I'm going to tell you, when that individual made their way to the altar, them ladies with their high hair and their long sleeves, they got around them and prayed them through until they were delivered from their addiction, delivered from their bondage, filled with the Holy Ghost and walking in victory. That's the way the folks at Riverside did. When I went around the community, Riverside is a neighborhood in Fort Worth. When I went around the community of Riverside and I told people, well, I attend Riverside Church of God, the first thing I would hear over and over and over and over and over again was, oh, that's Brother Gillum's church. My goodness, that, that is the most lovely, loving man I've ever met in my life. If there's anybody who lives what Christianity teaches, it's Brother Gillum and Sister Gillum. I heard that Dale over and over again. It really wore my heart that they had that reputation. And you know, you talk to people about the church and they'd say, that is the most loving bunch of people. They are the sweetest people I've ever... I don't know of any church that is so full of loving, caring people people as Riverside is. Oh, there are those who like to get out on stage and they like to announce to the world, I'm a Christian! But they don't play the role. Their actions do not support their claim. And then there are those few who come out on stage and they don't have to tell you what role they're playing. You can see it. Hallelujah. You can tell by the way they act. You can tell by the way they're conducting themselves. Anybody who's ever seen Cats on Broadway will tell you that those actors and actresses, those thespians, are so realistic in their portrayal of cats. Literally, I've heard people tell me this. They said, you wouldn't believe, said, well, while you're watching that musical, you get it in your head, you're looking at cats. Because those actors and actresses, literally, they stretch their bodies out and they, they do all the movements and all the actions of a cat. And they literally, after a while, your imagination kind of runs and you suddenly are looking at a stage full of cats that can sing. <laughs> no less. A thespian is one who engages in the dramatic arts. In other words, a thespian is an actor. Most people who identify as Christian 
are anything but actors. They tend more often to be couch potatoes who prefer to do nothing. They hear the word of God preached and ignore all that they have heard. They've read the pages of God's sacred script and then they lay it down having forgotten everything they've read before the binding has even hit the table. But the Lord has called us to be actors. Those who do, not merely those who have heard or read. You know, when you see actors get on the platform at the Oscars or at the Tonys or at the Emmys, oftentimes you'll hear them say as they receive their award, uh, it's the writers. We have great writers because no actor, no matter how great they are, can take a poorly written part and make it into something great. If the writing is good, then the actor can certainly bring it to life. But if the writing is bad, then no matter how good an actor they are, the lines are going to fall flat. My friend, I'm here to tell you today, God's given us the script. He's told us how we ought to act and how we ought to behave. And sadly, we got too many people in America today running around saying, I'm a Christian, look at me. I'm a Christian, look at me. While they're being hateful, while they're being homophobic, while they're being malicious, while they're being mean-spirited, while they're being judgmental, while they're being critical, while they're being condemnatory. And none of that is in the script. God hasn't called us to act like Christians. He's called us to act like Christians. Say, Pastor, you just said the same thing. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. You have one that acts like they're something they're not, and their actions don't even begin to bring out that role in their life. I've got family, folks. I grew up in a fundamentalist assembly of God family on my mother's side. I've got family today. They're so holy they won't even stay in the same room with me. Because they're just too holy to be in a room with a homo. And yet, they don't act like Christians. They sure do try to act like a Christian. They sure do try to convince you without the actions that they're a Christian. This is what James was talking about in James chapter 2, verses 14 through 20. He said, listen, you can stand there and say you're something, but not have the actions to back it up. Or you can have the actions to back it up so that you never have to open your mouth and say a thing. You don't have to tell anybody you're a Christian. They can tell you're a Christian because you're loving, you're supportive, you're compassionate, you're charitable, you're kind. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Do you understand what I'm telling you today? Mm -hmm. I love the ministry of encouragement. I have spent so many years of my life when I was struggling before I came out in 89. I spent so many years of my life in depression and in despair and struggling. Constant state of struggle. And it was amazing to me how many people around me just kind of, they thought the best way to approach this was to act like it wasn't happening. You ever feel that way? It's like you're struggling and people just aren't even noticing that you're struggling. And you're thinking, you're, how on earth can they not even see that I'm really going through a hard time right now? 
You'll write something on Facebook because you're hurt. You'll put something. I understand Facebook. Facebook, I, 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 what I don't understand is how people can't understand Facebook. People put things on Facebook because they feel like they have to put a voice to their feelings. They have to air out some frustration, some hurt, some pain, some struggle that they're going through. It's not about them uh, putting their business out in the public square. Yeah, that's kind of sort of what they're doing. But look beyond what they're doing and understand why they're doing it. Well, I just broke up with so-and-so. I was with them for so many years. Honey, they ain't putting that out there to brag. They're not putting that out there because they're happy. No, they're hurting. They're having a hard time. And yet I'll look at things people will write and things that people will say, and I think to myself, good Lord, have mercy. Do these people not understand that what this person needs right now is some encouragement? So I love to encourage. I've actually sat down at my computer over the years and I've created hundreds of memes that are designed for any number of different occasions. I made some for graduations. I made some for a new baby. I made some uh, for uh, uh, what? Uh, pets. I love when people share their pet pictures. So I actually made some that say, I'm an animal lover. I appreciate your pet pictures. But I've created a number of them to encourage people. I've, I've got a bunch of them that say, I'm praying for you. I've got many that I made that say, get well. Praying for your recovery. I've got some that I created for people who are in recovery and who are going through programs like AA. And when they share on their page, I've been sober 30 days or 90 days or 10 years, whatever the case might be. I've created memes that say, good for you. Keep going. You can do it. Why? Because I know how important encouragement can be. I know how much we as human beings crave and need someone to stand behind us and cheer us on. You know, you don't just see the cheerleaders get out on the ball field and cheer when the team is doing poorly. They don't sit in the stands and say, well, our team's doing real good right now, so we'll sit here and wait until they start doing that, and then we'll get out there and cheer them on. Do you hear what I'm telling you? No, no. They get out there throughout the whole game. Why? Because encouragement is a necessity every moment of the game. I'll tell you, if God's people would learn to be encouragers, how much better the church would be. How much better our world would be if we knew how to simply encourage one another and stand behind one another. I'm going to tell you, when I went to Riverside as a teenager, that was one of the things that I saw there that blew my mind. These people knew how to encourage one another. I mean, it, it, it was just the most encouraging, inspiring, uplifting church that I ever witnessed in my life. And I'm going to tell you today, that's the kind of church I hope to see here one day. A church full of people who know how to encourage one another. Those who know how to do and not merely those who have heard or read. In Matthew 25, 31 through 46, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall sit the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, 
Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the right hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in naked, and ye clothed me not sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. God has called us children to be thespian Christians not to get out on stage and declare the part we're supposed to be playing but to get out on stage and live the role my God make the script come to life mm -hmm. so that the world can see what God's people are supposed to look like we've got an entire political party in America today that calls itself the Christian party and yet their platform is exactly what I just read to you in terms of who's going to wind up in everlasting fire when I was sick you wanted nothing to do with me when I was a stranger the word stranger here do you know what that means that literally means an immigrant that's literally what that means and you didn't take me in I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was sick, you didn't visit me. Oh no, they don't want nothing to do with any of these things. Oh, but they get out on life stage and declare to the world, we are Christians, please shut up! My God, the horrible things you're doing to the reputation of Christianity by claiming to be Christians and then turning around and acting like devils. Good Lord, keep your profession to yourself and let those of us who are at least trying to live this thing, mm -hmm. let us handle representing what Christianity is supposed to represent. My telling the truth today. Yep. Amen. Matthew 21, 28 through 31. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. They say unto him, the first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. What's it about? It's about acting like a Christian. 
Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. It's not about just saying, okay, Lord, I'll do it, and walking out the door and not doing it. No, no. It's all about living the role, living the part. From the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 37 through 48, but let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's what Trump says is his favorite part of the Bible. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain or two. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, to do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do so. Be ye therefore perfect, which means mature or complete, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Folks, today the Lord is not looking for, neither is our world needing people who act like Christians. What God is looking for and what our world today needs are Christians who act like Christians are supposed to act. Hallelujah. Too many approach our script and they then ad lib their acts. But our God has given us a script and He's called us to be thespian Christians. That is, a Christian who performs the script. James chapter two one uh, uh, James chapter one verses verse twenty two my final passage today be ye excuse me but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves many are going to leave this life deceived. They've convinced themselves that they can ignore the script and do as they please. But those who genuinely understand the nature of theater understand that the play is only as good as the writing. Bad writing produces bad performances no matter how great the actor but we have been provided an impeccable script by the creator of the universe. How on earth can we improve upon what God has written? Oh, I'm telling you, all my fundamentalists and evangelical friends out there, you better repent today, folks. If you're one who only tries to act like a Christian, you need to repent. And you need to join the ranks with us of those who strive to be thespian Christians. Amen. And act like Christians. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, I want to tell you, a lot of churches this afternoon, a lot of people went to church so the preacher could tell them how they could be rich. 
and how they could have everything they want to have. And what cracks me up is this church that people want to criticize and people want to find fault with and people want uh, to say is evil and wicked and all this foolishness. We're up here preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We're up here preaching what Christians are supposed to act like and how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to do. You know what, sweetie? I'll stand before God in the judgment with a whole lot more confidence than you should ever dare stand before God. I'm not concerned about our message. I know God's pleased with it. Because at the end of the day, this ministry is striving to produce loving, compassionate, charitable, kind, encouraging, inspiring, uplifting, faithful, passionate Christians who live the role and not just claim to possess the part. Am I telling the Amen. truth today? Amen. I want us.